After about an hour of setting up the copper cell, I realized to get through all this material quicker, I need to set up a couple more. So I ordered another aspirator bottle, and while we're waiting for that to arrive, I set up my first silver cell after I made a couple adjustments. The cell actually worked pretty good when I used it for some experiments, but I realized if the voltage was too high, the plastic actually got a little soft and the lid fell off on me one time. So we'll just keep this crank down pretty low and see if we can use this to get through some of the extra copper and silver. So here's what we have from the first cleanout. I strained the uh, shot into this beaker here and that should be most of our silver, but we'll test for that a little later on. Right now, I'm gonna get this aquarium set up and I purchased this new aspirator bottle, so we'll set it up like the experimental silver cell except with the silver cell we were plating out the silver and the copper was going into solution in this setup we're going to plate out the copper and we're going to leave the silver and other metals in the anode bottle so we'll get this copper shot put into the anode basket and we'll get it hung into our aquarium full of copper sulfate And just like we're using in our other copper cells, we'll use just a piece of copper pipe as our anode. Keep in mind that any part of the anode that is submerged in the copper sulfate solution will start to corrode away. So it's better to pile up your shot kind of out of the solution a little bit and then have the copper anode rest on top of your pile of shot, which I do add more as we go forward. I'm a little concerned about the smaller neck on this aspirator bottle. It's a 1926 outlet. I couldn't find anything larger online like my other anode bottle. Uh, that is a 2440 on the bottom, which has worked pretty good, but this is a little narrower. Um, it's, it's a much narrower outlet actually compared to that other one, so we'll see how it does. I replaced the anode and I put a piece of copper in and I didn't clean it off at all and so I put a bunch of chlorides in there which actually was pretty useful to see that the filter works well and it's kept all the chlorides at least visibly inside the aspirator bottle but I want to get that changed out and I also purchased some new zip ties these I got off of Granger and um, I'll leave a link down in the description if you want to buy these. These are actually rated for nuclear waste. <laughs> so they're supposed to be chemically resistant. I want to give one of these a try. It was $110 for 100 of these, so they're a little over a dollar a piece. So I'm still working through the best way to clean out the anode bottle. Eventually I do figure the proper size inlet and outlet glass pieces and force through about a liter of distilled water and then capture that uh, running it through some sort of filter or screen 
probably uh, will be the best way to clean it out. So I'm, I'm kind of, as I'm doing this clean out, working through in my mind how much water does it take, uh, will one liter be enough to get a good clean out um, periodically as we go through to retrieve our silver and other metals. After removing the slimes from the aspirator bottle, I allowed them to settle in a beaker and filtered. Then I'm going to dry out this filter paper and we'll get it in the XRF and see what's in our slimes. On the sixth day, God created man, and on the sixth day of this experiment, I created a mess. I dropped a rubber stopper into the aquarium, and the concussion from that rubber stopper, when it hit the bottom of the glass, and I was standing right there, and I heard it, the aspirator bottle started to spit out its contents. So I grabbed my camera, and I got some footage of it. So I placed a 50 milliliter beaker beneath the filter and tried to capture some of the material that was spewing out. It took about an hour and it all cleared up, but there is still a little bit of a kind of a murkiness to the overall quality of the copper sulfate. All right, let's test to see what we have in our slimes. I'm going to put a piece of this in the XRF, and you can see, kind of for reference, over to the left, that's a piece of filter paper from uh, Silver Cell. That's another video that should be out pretty soon. Uh, but you can see the difference in color between the two filter papers, so I'm anticipating there being quite a bit of uh, other base metals in this test. So I poured off the copper sulfate and then also filtered it and now we're going to add it into these test tubes and we're going to run our experiments to see if the other base metals have contaminated the copper sulfate solution or if we can just go ahead and reuse the solution or if it needs to be further purified. First, we'll add salt to the solution, and there should be no reaction. I'm going to dilute the salt in a little bit of distilled water, and then we'll add it into the test tube. Now we'll add sodium carbonate, and um, here we should get a solid precipitant of copper carbonate and then an aqueous solution of sodium sulfate. And we'll do the same, about 20 milliliters will dissolve. Now we'll add sodium hydroxide. And 
And then throughout this process, what we're looking for is impurities. I'm trying to see if this copper sulfate has been contaminated at all in the electrolysis process. And if so, with what? So now we we'll use um, sodium bicarbonate, that regular baking soda, and we should get the same reaction as we did when we used the sodium carbonate. Potassium hydroxide. Well, those were some pretty interesting results. The sodium hydroxide actually shows a black precipitate at the top of the test tube here, so there is a contamination uh, that shows in that. And after letting these test tubes sit for about an hour, the potassium hydroxide actually showed that same uh, black precipitate. It's best to deal with this little black stain now instead of reusing our copper sulfate over and over again. And while I go figure that out, I couldn't end this video without showing you one of my favorite reactions with copper sulfate, Chevrolet's salt.